Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're taking a look at the Pico Fighting Board, a Raspberry Pi powered arcade stick PCB. This one is incredibly fast and incredibly affordable. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, the Pico Fighting Board was sent to me for a fair and honest review, and that is exactly what we're gonna do here. This fighting board is powered by a Raspberry Pi Pico. Along the top of this PCB, you have your standard terminals used for arcade buttons and your joystick. On the left-hand side here, we have terminals for RGB LEDs. On the bottom is a standard 20-pin wiring harness. And then we have player indicator lights here for players one, two, three, and four. And finally, a terminal for auxiliary buttons. From a size comparison, here is the Pico fighting board beside a Brook UFB. In terms of dimensions, they're very close to being identical. And here is the Pico fighting board beside an incredibly inexpensive generic zero delay board. Now, since the Raspberry Pi Pico is powering the Pico fighting board, and you can see it soldered to the top right here, the main connector is a micro USB. Some people might not like that connection at all, but I really don't see that as any kind of issue. The Pico fighting board is meant to be mounted inside of a fighting stick. It's not meant to go anywhere. And there are tons of different cables, tons of different types of adapters out there for micro USB. So at this point, it's really not a concern. To test the Pico fighting board out, I'm going to be mounting it inside of my handy dandy hitbox. Wiring this up for the most part was pretty simple and straightforward. The wire positions are the exact same as on a brook board. Admittedly though, I was a little bit confused here with this button labeling. I did have to check the website to make sure I was placing the wires in the correct terminals. And I have been told that this will be clarified for future revisions. So here's what everything looks like all wired up. I've got all my buttons wired in and I'm even using a Paradise Arcade Chimana on that 20 pin connector just to see if it works. Paradise Arcade Chimana is an LED solution that is incredibly good. And I'm also using Bitbang Gaming's player LEDs on that player LED slot. As soon as I plugged this into my PC, I saw the Chimana light come on, which means I'm getting power here and the Bitbang Gaming Player LED indicated that I was plugged into first player, which means everything looks to be working correctly. Now, I only attached the Kaimana LED to one button just to see if it would actually work here. I didn't think it was going to, and I'm surprised it's actually working. So there is the LED glowing in all of its glory. Now, testing out this Pico fighting board, and I thought it felt incredibly fast. I'll go over the numbers in just a minute here, but I was very impressed with how fluid everything felt. In terms of buttons here, everything worked as expected. There were no issues at all. I was just really blown away with how fast this thing felt. Now, one huge benefit of being powered by a Raspberry Pi Pico is how easy the Pico fighting board is to update. You press a button on it, you plug it into your computer, and then you drag and drop the file onto it that you want to update it with. And that is it. Since it's open source, it's very easily updatable and a lot of people can contribute and improve it. Now, another huge benefit of being powered by a Raspberry Pi is the fact that the Pico Fighting Board has its own web configurator. All you have to do is press and hold start while you plug this into your PC. Go to 192.168.7.1 and you'll have access to this web configurator. From here, if I click on settings, I can change the input mode from X input, Nintendo Switch or PS3 direct input and also change the D-pad mode or the SOCD mode because yes, you can change those things on this board. Under configuration, if I go to pin mapping here, I can remap my buttons as I see fit. Now under configuration and LED configuration, I can change how the LEDs behave, including the max brightness. And if for some reason you are curious about this big danger zone button, because I was, it's just a reset settings button. I'll leave a link to this page in the description below. It's incredibly helpful if you have one of these little boards that tells you all of the buttons mappings for every single mode. For input modes here, it tells you the combinations on how to get into each one. There's Nintendo Switch mode, X input mode, which is great for PC or even the Raspberry Pi, and also direct input and PS3 mode. So out of the box, this is compatible with the PC, Raspberry Pi, Nintendo Switch, PS3, and also maybe even Android. Uh, in D-pad modes here, I haven't tested it with Android yet. Uh, in D-pad modes here, you can change this from D-pad to emulate the left analog stick or even emulate the right analog stick. And that's all done with button combinations. This also has different SOCD modes and you can change them on the fly. And last up here are the RGB LEDs and they tell you exactly how to change these into different modes 
and they do have different modes available. Earlier on, I said that this PCB feels fast, and here are the official performance numbers. If these numbers hold true, this is incredibly impressive. On average, we're looking at 0.85 milliseconds of input delay. If we take a look at this chart here, this chart has tested a bunch of different PCBs from a bunch of different fighting sticks and tested in the exact same manner. The top of the list is the Brook Universal Fighting Board, and that has one millisecond of input delay on average here. So the Pico Fighting Board sitting at 0.85 milliseconds would place it at the top of the list here for the fastest PCB you can get and the fastest by a considerable margin. And the kicker here is that it's only $25. So let's get into what I like and what I don't like about the Pico Fighting Board and whether or not I recommend it. We'll start out here with what I don't like. And the first thing I don't like are the button labelings on this fighting board. They are a little bit confusing, especially if you're used to something like a Brook board. It's hard to understand exactly what each button does. I mean, you know what each button does when you're playing a game, but at the same time, when you're trying to activate different modes, it is a little bit confusing and I did have to reference the website quite a bit to see exactly what I needed to do. The second thing I didn't like here was the fact that I had to disconnect the Bitbang Gaming Player LED and the Paradise Arcade Chimana in order to make this work on the Switch. These things were drawing a little bit too much power for the Pico Fighting Board and it wasn't registering on my Switch as a controller. As soon as I disconnected these things on the Pico, it worked absolutely fine on the Switch. It worked very well on the Switch. And I don't know if this is going to be a permanent issue or just an issue right now with this revision, but hopefully they can fix it in the future. The last thing here really isn't an issue for me or other people who are fairly technical, but this is a Raspberry Pi. So there are some technical aspects of this, like updating firmware and making sure things are working correctly. And if you're not into any of that stuff, if you want a simple plug and play solution that you don't have to think about at all, well, the Pico Fighting Board is currently in revision one and it's not quite there yet. Now moving into things I like about the Pico Fighting Board, and there are a ton of them. First and foremost here is the performance. If these numbers hold true, the Pico Fighting Board is the fastest fighting board you can get on the market and second place isn't even close to it. This is incredibly fast on the Switch, the PC, the PS3. If you're looking for the best competitive advantage, you might want to check out the Pico Fighting Board. The second thing I like here is even though the Pico Fighting Board doesn't really have a lot of hardware options in terms of connections, well, it makes up for it with button combinations to do the exact same thing here. For example, input modes and D-pad modes and SOCD modes and even changing your RGB LEDs just by button combinations. And that's a really good thing. The third thing I like about this is kind of a bundled point. It's powered by the Raspberry Pi, it's open source and development is very active. If there is an issue, chances are it'll get patched out pretty quick. If you want a specific feature, you can request it and it might even make its way into a build. Anyone can contribute to this project and make it better if they want. And that's a really cool thing. If you find a version of the firmware that works for you, that you love, you can just stick with it and forget about all the other versions. The fourth point here, it kind of piggybacks on the third point, so maybe this is more of a 3B, but anyways, uh, this thing is incredibly configurable. If you go to this configurator, 192.168.7.1, you can change up almost anything on this board. On top of that, if you're super technical here, you can just code your own stuff and get away with it considering it's a Raspberry Pi. Now the last point here, which is probably one of the most important points, the Pico Fighting Board is only $25. This is potentially the fastest PCB that you can place in an arcade stick. 25 bucks seems like a pretty darn good bargain. So let's get into whether or not I recommend the Pico Fighting Board. At this price point, 25 bucks, it's sitting right beside the Brook Zero Pi, which is also an incredible little PCB. These are a little bit different though. If you're looking for something that's easy, just to set it and forget it, you don't want to have to worry about firmware, you don't want to have to worry about any technical issue whatsoever, then the Zero Pi might be the way to go. But if you're looking for a PCB that is incredibly fast and also highly configurable, then the Pico Fighting Board might be right up your alley. At the end of the day here, I was very impressed with the Pico Fighting Board and I love the open source nature of it. If you're in the market for a PCB that's relatively inexpensive for your arcade stick, you'd be crazy not to consider the Pico Fighting Board. There is something I want to point out though. This is still very early on in development. I tested out revision 1. 
there's probably going to be a revision two or even revision three, and it's only going to get better from here. But anyways, that is all I've got for this video. Let me know your thoughts on the Pico fighting board in the comments below. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Was there a feature missing that you wanted to see? If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Thank you, everyone. Take care.